Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. Today, I'm super excited to show you the Isheen HV version, the 6S 3-inch version they released, the X140 HV. This is a little sub 250 gram 6S ripper. And why do I say it's sub 100, 250 grams? Well, I ran a 6S 450 on here that GMB sent me. I have a whole pile of them over here, so I wanna say thanks to GMB for doing that. Um, and I also ran low profile nuts on here. Uh, all you really have to do is actually replace two of these, run a 6S on a 450 setup, and you're gonna get this just under 250 grams. And that's what a lot of people are looking for. I let some people at the field fly this, and they were kind of amazed at how small and fast this quad really is. Now, some other people were concerned with the flip of death with this quad. And when it came to me, the motor idle, the timing was set to 3.5 on the motor idle inside beta flight. And I, I, I was very suspicious of that after I flew it and I had the flip of death myself and I kept raising it and raising it and raising it until it went away. So I also did some PID tuning on this quad for you. I'm going to give you the CLI dump down in the link below. You can check that out and download it and apply it to yours if you already have it. Hopefully this video helps you get yours flying as good as this one is now. I'm also using the HQ 3x3 props and I'll try to put a link down below for these because prop also makes all the difference. If you have a prop then you're going to get a quad. So uh, let's go ahead now and let's talk about the battery setup on here. The XT30 running off of the 6S battery. So here's a little close up of that GMB 450, the 6S battery with an XT30 connector on there. One of the first ones I've ever seen this small to be able to handle 6S. Now someone else mentioned on my channel, oh well, if it's 6S, it's probably gonna be fine with the XT30 connector. Uh, it's, it's, it's more efficient, so it's not gonna melt this XT30 connector. Um, depending on what you put this battery on, if you put it on a larger ESC, something like a 90 amp ESC, yeah, you're gonna melt this almost instantly as you reach your peak throttle point. But the thing about this smaller battery is that this is gonna go on smaller aircraft where you're probably not likely to draw more than 30 amps at a time. The way these are originally made, the XT30 was rated to around 30 amps of amp draw through here. And the hotter you get, the more voltage that you draw through here, the more amps you draw through here, that cable is going to start to heat up. And the, the problem in the past with that is that when we were flying single rotor helicopters, we were running something like 120 amp ESCs. And as we drew more amps through the cables, from the battery into the aircraft to the ESCs, it would start to heat up these connectors and we would have huge catastrophic failures with our helis. So these are originally made, the XT30 was rated at 30 amps, the XT60 was rated at 60 amps, and the XT90 obviously was rated at 90 amps. You can go for a few moments, um, but you can't do this continuously above 90 amps. So you'll start to melt this connector. Um, and it has been proven out in the field by other aircraft RCs and um, even some multi-rotors melting these cables. So you wanna be specific about what you put each of these batteries on. But I'm confident that this battery is gonna do just fine on this aircraft and hopefully that little explanation taught you something today on the channel. But let's go ahead now and let's take this X140 HV version out in the field. Let me show you what it looks like flying out there uh, with my tune on it. It was a lot of fun once I got it dialed down enough to where it wouldn't do the flip of death and it flew a little smoother for me. Here we go. So let's go ahead and get the quad up in the air. My buddy decided he wanted me to chase his airplane. I'm going to put the specs for this quad down in the bottom left hand corner for you. You can pause it and look at that if you want to. 1507 motors, 20 amp ESCs, Betaflight F4 flight controller, Foxier Aero Micro Pro camera on here, and up to around 300 milliwatt switchable VTX, which is pretty sweet. And here comes that flip of death. This was my first battery to the ground. Not super stoked about that. Now I spent the next hour or hour and a half PID tuning it for you guys and I up my power here with my smart audio to 200 and now I'm ready for a good flight with a decent tune on here. Above 60% throttle was right about where I started around 60 to 70% was where I got that flip of death and I got unbelievable 
the quad shaking vibration jello all of the uh, above was happening to this quad and even though i was flying those hq props it just had a terrible tune on here uh, it's kind of like one of those situations i get in where someone sends me a prototype and like hey check this out it looks great on the bench all the specs look you know decently amazing you get it and you realize you have to pid tune the entire thing and this was one of those quads it was however easier than the most recent pid tune prototype session i've had from a company i won't name names but now we're in a good spot with this quad and i love these hq three inch three by three props i've talked about these before on the channel on my other three inch reviews i'm a huge fan of these props uh, and I'm, I believe I'm running out. So HQ, if you guys are listening, please uh, hit me up with some new 3x3s. They're doing great on the channel. And look at the tune now. We're not seeing a lot of that jello vibrations. I'm not even seeing a whole lot of shutter on those quick flip around and transition moves. Back around this tree for a little yaw snap. Flying extremely fast. My friends that flew this, they're multi-GP pilots. We're not used to flying freestyle, and they actually crashed. Uh, both of them crashed at the field. Sorry about that, Colby. They're just not used to doing all the flippy-dippy stuff. And that's fine. If you're not used to the flippy-dippy stuff, you can stick to a 3S battery on this quad, and you can use it as a trainer. It is going to be a good trainer on a 3S battery or 4S. You can move up 3, 4, and 6S. But I'm having a lot of fun, and this was the challenge for me, you guys, was that this was advertised as a 6S quad, and I would be highly disappointed if at the end of the day I didn't come home with something that flew like this. And some of the other reviewers, I don't qu think they quite showed us a full throttle punch out with this. So uh, I'm going to show you a full throttle punch out right about here. We're just going to go all the way up, elevator up to the top floor and no flip of death. I could not do that before I changed the motor timing. And I'm going to put that CLI link down at the bottom for you guys so you can put it on yours. If you have the H1, the uh, 140HV, please by all means grab that, it's gonna be great. And I'm really liking this tune now, it's snappy. It feels like a quad that was sent to me that flies on rails. And thank God that I got the GMB batteries just in time to test this. Because I had this quad sitting there for a while, but the smallest 6S battery I had at the time was a 1050. And I honestly didn't want to put a 1050 on here because I, it would just be too big for this particular quad. Now if you're really, really punching it, you're going to get around a, a 2 to 3 minute flight time with this quad on a 450 you can go up to the 550 you can fly even an 850 on here you can go all the way up to a 1050 but it's going to fly like a hog and now we have awesome punch out tons of control and an unbelievable amount of speed on 6s it's just really really fast i believe if you were to be able to fly and handle yourself on a multi gp course with this you could really probably come in the top three extremely quick and again I'm not a racer so I don't claim to be a, a racer at all I, but I do love freestyle and I love tuning quads so I'm really happy where it's at now and uh, I gotta say it's a worthy price at around a hundred dollars I think they discounted them down to a hundred dollars so good deal all right guys thanks for watching the flight test welcome back let's talk about this quad now when I first got it, it was definitely something that um, gave me a run for my money. When I put it up for the first few batteries, I almost wrote it off because it just kept flipping down to the ground and I thought something was physically wrong with it. But then I remembered the motor timing was some of the original problems with the flip of death. And this started around 2016 with a lot of these high voltage quads coming down the pipe from China um, to us. And the reviewers were having some issues with it and we realized that as we increased our motor timing, the ESC reset function that was happening um, due to low voltage to the ESCs was, was needing more power. So when we got more power to the ESCs, more available power coming from the motors and keeping those ESCs juiced, they were okay. Uh, but when you get way too low, and I've seen some motor timing all the way up to 20 
um, and that's kind of crazy but um, for this one I, I found that around 9.5 to 10 was perfect for stopping the flip of death um, and if you want to test that again i have that cli dump down below for the community you can check that out and my pid tune this is my custom pid tune on this one i've tuned tons of quads out there diatone uh, and various others but if you guys want to try that you can it's a cool quad now and banggood just dumped the price on these as well because so many other reviewers had problems with it um, and, I, and it made me wish that i had reviewed this one a couple months ago because it has been here in my shop i've just been busy with other things but there you go guys i, I hope you appreciate it and uh, thanks again for flying with me as always i'm justin davis guys take care and i'll see you on the next one